What is going on, guys, and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the channel. I hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. Today, we got a really exciting game to cover. We're going to be doing a preview and prediction of this week's matchup between the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers. The Buffalo Bills come into this game with a record of 8-3. For the most part, you know, when you look at the outlook of the schedule, they've been pretty good this season, with the exception of that two-game stretch between the Titans and the Chiefs. But other than that, the Buffalo Bills have been solid. I really like the direction that they're moving. It's probably a bigger game for the San Francisco 49ers. You look at the 49ers, 5-6 and six record, 4th in the division. But for the injuries they have, they're still in a really good position to make a push towards the playoffs. They're only one game back of a playoff spot in probably one of, if not the most competitive division in the NFL. One game back of a playoff spot. This is a very, very important game for the San Francisco 49ers. Before we get into the box scores, just one side note. This game will not be played in San Francisco, although it's technically a home game for the 49ers. 49ers had to find a new home, so they'll be playing in Arizona for the rest of the home games. And this one will be played in Glendale, Arizona at State Farm Stadium. So Bill's looking to bounce back from their nightmare that they played in their last game against the Cardinals. Anyways, let's move on to the box scores. Let's take a look at each one of these uh, teams more in depth. Let's take a look at this 49ers game that they played last week against the Rams. Again, huge game for them last week against the division rivals. They took that one by a score of 23-20 allowed them to keep on making a playoff push. 49ers, again, have been extremely hurt. Still hurt at the quarterback position. Nick Mullins had to step in. He was solid last week, 24 for 35. No touchdowns and interception. Mostert, who's been hurt for a good portion of the season as well, had 16 carries last week. The running game had a bit of trouble getting going. They ran a total of 33 times, only 112 yards. But still sort of a balanced attack in this offense. And for the injury, is still moving in the right direction. Debo, 11 receptions, 133 yards. So nice to have Debo back in the depth chart. You know, he, he's our number one receiver when he's healthy. He's a fantastic receiver. If he stays healthy, he's going to be a great receiver down the line in the future as well. He's obviously a big part of, his, of our offense. He can do so many things. You know, even in the running game, when you look at it on some of those sort of motion plays, Debo's so important. Definitely need him to stay in the lineup. I know that he's still questionable for this week with his hamstring injury. So hopefully that all works out and we can get a healthy Debo for the rest of the season and hopefully into the playoffs as well. 49ers overall, 24 receptions, 252 receiving yards, no touchdowns in the air. They only had one touchdown in total, which was um, by Mostert on the ground. Um, and then they ended up winning it with the field goal as time expired. On the defensive side, I just want to touch on the defense a little bit because I know there's some rumors coming up um, with defensive coordinator Robert Sala potentially taking a head coach job. This is a defense that has a that's had a ton of injuries. You know, you look at Sherman, who's been injured for a good portion of the season, a bunch of other guys, you know, no Quan Alexander anymore, D Ford on the IL, Tart out. You know, the list keeps going on throughout this entire roster, but the defense especially. And, you know, Robert Sala deserves a head coach job. He's such a great personality, but he's also great at getting this defense going. And the defense so far this year isn't a telltale of sort of what they can do because you look back at their Super Bowl roster and with a healthy team what this defense could potentially be. Um, but I think that at the end of the season, Robert Sala probably gets a head coach job. I don't know if it's going to be to a team like Jacksonville. I, I know the Detroit Lions are being pushed to look into hiring him as well. Just wanted to point that out there. I might cover that in another video as well, so just keep an eye out for that. Let's flip over to the Buffalo Bills. Bills come into this game, like I was mentioning before, with an 8-3 record. They had a pretty nice win last week against the Chargers. They took that one by a score of 27-17. to And the Chargers, I think, with a 3-8 and record, does not show how much of an improvement I think the Chargers are making and, and the direction that they're moving in. You know, you look at 
three losses that the Chargers have where they were up by 17 plus in those games. This is a solid Chargers team. And again, a really nice win by the Bills. Allen passed 18 for 24, a touchdown and interception. I like where Josh Allen's going as well. I've watched a few Bills games this week. I mean, this year. And when he doesn't turn the ball over and finds a little bit of consistency, he's a guy who really looks like a franchise quarterback and is right up there in conversations for, you know, top quarterbacks in the NFL. But then where we saw him against the Titans and Chiefs, he was the complete opposite. So that's why I find this game really interesting. I'm really curious to see what Josh Allen can do about a defense who's getting healthier and a defense that has a lot of momentum after forcing four turnovers last week against the Rams. Singletary had 11 carries, 82 yards. Buffalo Bills ran the ball really well last week. 30 carries, 172 yards, which is an average of just under six. Gabriel Davis, 79 receiving yards. He led the way. Stephon Diggs led the way. Seven receptions, 39 yards. You know, I, I sort of like the way that they used Stephon Diggs last week. The more touches Diggs can get opens the way for everybody else. And it's really tough when the Bills use Diggs right for teams to defend him. And we saw particularly in their game against the Seahawks that a lot of secondaries have trouble defending Diggs and you don't need him to necessarily always get chunk plays. If you can just get him some touches, focus a few guys, you know, on digs, get the defense worrying about him, it opens up the field. And this is a really underrated receiving core, in my opinion. I really like Davis. I really like Beasley. And there's so much that the Bills can do. Bills defense is solid. I think the Bills defense is better than the offense, in my opinion. I, I, I'm a big fan of their secondary. It's given some good teams a lot of trouble. You know, again, going back to that Seahawks game. I expect much of the same this week. You know, no Kittle, Garoppolo, still a hurt 49ers offense. But I think overall this game is going to be a test for the Bills. Let's go over to the betting lines now. Again, filming this video on Friday. So a couple days for the lines to swing. I know that the Bills, I think, were favorites at one point. I've seen this game be, yeah, Bills opened as minus two and a half point favorites. I have the 49ers as one point favorites currently, and both teams as minus 110 on the money line. I mean, this is a really, really tough game to predict. 49ers need this one. They're coming off a fantastic win, and you're facing a Bills team who has been really good for the majority of the season, but has also had a few stinkers. It could go either way. I would probably lean towards the Bills just because I think they have more upside on offense, and I still don't know how much I trust the 49ers defense, because last week was the first week that they really looked like they came together. But again, 49ers have momentum, so you can completely justify taking the 49ers here on the spread and the money line. As for the over-under, 47 and a half, I'd lean toward the under. Uh, if I had to lean towards the Bills sort of not being great on one side. I would say that it's their offense and the 49ers are able to get some takeaways. So yeah, I'd go with the under 47 and a half. Anyways, guys, if you did make it to this point in the video, thank you. Let me know your thoughts and predictions on this game down in the comment section below. It should be a really, really good one. So let's get some conversations going. Who do you guys like this week? If you guys did like today's video, make sure to leave that thumbs up. Subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our podcast and our store. We have some really good college football merch in there. Great designs, great quality. Make sure to check those out. Links for those will be down in the description down below. Anyways, guys, again, if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.